baby better, better than brand new sweater. Oh, I love my baby, he keeps it warm at night. Yes, I love my baby the most, he makes me break the toast. I love my baby, he makes me feel alright. When I'm feeling new, I always know just what to do. I love my baby, hold it very tight. Yes, I love my baby better, better than I swear my soul. Good evening and welcome to the Grand at Home. It is cocktail hour. I have mine and they have theirs. Please welcome from Seattle, where it actually is happy hour. Um, we want to welcome Sunday and Mr. Gessel. Uh, thanks for joining me today. Yeah, thanks for having us, Joe. So this is going to be fun. This is um, These interviews, these cocktail hours have been up till now uh, me calling in favors with artist friends of mine who have been to the Grand before, or uh, maybe we're coming in for the next year. Um, but I, I kind of, you know, I knew that I knew who they were. I knew where the sweet spot was. I wasn't going to misspeak as an interviewer. And all that's out the window right now because I met you guys like 48 hours ago. Um, <laughs> and uh, I do appreciate you coming on. I can say though that um, that I am I am uh, I'm looking forward to tomorrow night, which is an all music night with you all, an all music hour. Um, I'm looking forward to Oshkosh getting to know you better and getting to know your music better. Uh, I think that um, from from what I've what I've learned, uh, your act and the Grand are a really nice match. So, uh, with all of that said, thanks for being with us tonight. Oh well, it's our pleasure. Yeah. I mean, Forty eight hours, we're old friends by now, right? Right. We're, hey, we're drinking together, so right, right. Um, so you are. I got it because this is. I thought this was cool. I thought it was like an, 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 when I heard that you um. Somewhere in in, uh, in in one of the videos I had looked at, you mentioned that it was coming from the RV. And I thought, okay, so they have an RV that they travel in. But you have an RV that you live in, you broadcast in. Is that right? Yes. <laughs> and how long have you been married? We've been married almost five years and living, touring, and broadcasting in our RV for two years. And we're still married. That's great. That's great. <laughs> That's great. So Sunday, tell me, um, tell me a little bit about about yourself first. First, where does the unusual stage name come from? Well, um, before and Mr. Gessel got together as an act, I was bartending, and uh, I had met Jason through music, and you know we had connected with uh, a few shows, like a few jazzy stuff, and. Um, he started showing up to my bar with my shift was every Sunday and he just would show up every Sunday like clockwork. And I finally was like, I think this guy has a crush on me. And he started calling me. Sunday. That's, with me. Ah, that's adorable. It's really cute. But you know, when we formed the band, I, I was like, well, we have to spell it like the ice cream though. Cause I'm mm -hmm. really <laughs> that's a fabulous that's a fabulous name and a fabulous reason uh it, it, did jason is she telling the truth yeah <laughs> <laughs> yep. you better say that <laughs> yeah 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 
Yeah, I was playing in a honky tonk band up about an hour and a half north of Seattle every Sunday, a four hour gig at this kind of biker bar, doing all like Will and Jennings type stuff. So then I go to, she worked at a dive bar. It was my favorite dive bar. So I'd go there after I was done playing because I wouldn't drink because I had to drive and I wouldn't drink at the bar and I don't drink when I play. But when I'm done with a four hour dive bar gig, I'm ready for a beer at a dive bar. (laughs) So it really was for the beer that you were showing up on Sunday. Well, they have 33 and a half ounce beers. They're big. (laughs) So moving from that, you each had at that time, your own kind of solo gigs going on, yes? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Jason is a lifelong musician. Uh, he was kind of the the big star of Denmark High School, where he went to school uh, in Wisconsin, actually, <laughs> uh, just outside of Green Bay. And he could tell you more about it. But, um, you know, he's been a professional guitarist since he was 16, which was a lot, long time ago. I do know Denmark. I mean, you can't quite hit it with a rock from Oshkosh, but uh, but it is, you know, it's one of those beautiful signs off of I forty three just before you hit Green Bay. So, how big how big a city is is Denmark actually? I think it's um, like eighteen hundred. Okay, it's a small town. It's a small town. Yeah, you know, mm-hmm. I lived in Maribel and then went to Denmark, where so I went to high school. Which Maribel was about I don't know five six miles away. So, oh. yeah, yeah. So, and, and Sunday, are you from the Seattle area, from the Northwest? I'm from the Northwest. Uh, I grew up in a very small town also called Acme, Washington. Shout out to Acme. That's probably- Acme, like the Roadrunner, the coyote stuff? Excellent. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I uh, went to Mel Baker High School. My uh, graduating class, I think, was 160 people. And my town was about 260 people, so it was pretty small. Yep. I uh, just want to say, you know, we are going to shout out things as we go here. And, and uh, I wasn't the only one enamored by your Sunday story, uh, obviously, so it was Jamie. And impressions to Kevin Peters for an awesome intro. Thanks, Kevin. Kevin is, uh, of course, the, uh, the person who got us together, and, uh, and I'm grateful for that. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Now, um, we heard your opening, and thank you for doing that, because there's not always music here at uh, at, at the cocktail hour, but it was a, it's a great te- – I might play it at the end just so we get a little teaser of, uh, of, the, of the music again. Describe, your, describe the style, uh, I, which I love, but I can't possibly describe. Okay. Jason, do you want to take this one, uh, Mr. Gessel? Well, we, we call it vintage jazz because we think it has has a nice ring to it. Um, sometimes jazz has a bad connotation. Sometimes you go to places and they're like, oh, I don't like jazz, just a bunch of guys sitting on stage soloing for too long. And we're like, no, no, we play the old, the old stuff from the 20s and the 30s, you know, the, the Nat King Cole songbook. Um, but we're really inspired by like Django Reinhardt and, um, and then the old swing as well. A lot of the old uh, Western swing. I like all the old country music too. So that's why we throw in some of those songs Patsy Cline used to do for the Western Swing vibe. And then we throw a lot of stuff in that Louis Armstrong did. Um, but yeah, just we both love that music and always have. We both played in rock bands, country bands, um, contemporary jazz groups. But when we got this group together, we we wanted to do the old school jazz. So um, yeah, we we just settled on vintage jazz. I don't know why. I guess it sounds good. Well, we definitely have like a vintage style, and we also write in the same style. So mm-hmm. the forties was really what attracted us in the beginning of our musical relationship, and we actually our first album is only songs from the nineteen thirties. Oh, cool! And and I, I I love this style. I just don't know how to describe it. So uh, you did, thank you for that. Um, now, something that uh, I thought was interesting that I did not know until we until we met and and, and talked about it is that it's possible that there are people in Oshkosh who have seen you perform before, correct? Oh, definitely. We've actually played several times at Beckett's, one of our favorite places. Uh, Jason actually went to college with Chris. Yep. Uh, 
a long time ago. No offense, Chris. <laughs> um, and Dylan Stoli, who is one of the bartenders there, is also an artist, and he has a uh, he's like shown a lot of his paintings over at Beckett's, and we've purchased some of his paintings and. We actually did a commissioned uh, dedication video for him and his wife for their anniversary, and he made us these little paintings. <laughs> Dylan's wife uh, and partner, Danny, was actually an employee of mine at the Grand for, for a, a while. Um, a, a while back. Uh, a while back. But oh, yeah, it all goes. Yeah, well, you know, Dylan served me a few drinks along the way. Um, <laughs> Chris, of course, is a great advocate for the arts here locally and uh, and music and music as you know, as we were talking um, offline before before we came on. Uh, one of the things I think that's so cool about uh, being a musician in Oshkosh is that there are places like Beckett's that are doing regular sets of, you know, musicians, uh, local, local and touring musicians uh, as, as part of their uh, their offerings. Uh, we have, you know, you can go up and down Main Street in Oshkosh and there'd be a a dozen or two dozen places on any Friday or Saturday night where you can get a meal or an appetizer or a drink and, and enjoy some music at the same time. So uh, Chris is a big part of that. So I uh, had to talk to him. I don't even know if he's on there. Maybe he's on watching. We'll see. Uh, but I would shout him out anyway. Uh, so, so if you are watching and these, these two look familiar to you, it is because you may have seen them at Beckett's. Um, what's uh what is a, uh, <laughs> Let's let's uh, the the word normal is kind of uh, ironic in this sentence. But what is a normal tour like for you? When when do you get into the in, into the, when you leave home? When do you get back? How how long do you do you like to go out? Well, we like to block out a pretty big chunk of time. Uh, you know, we we call ourselves nomads because usually our tours last between four and sixteen weeks. So uh, we'll be out uh, to the Midwest twice a year, and we try to link it out to the East Coast at least once a year. Um, we spend our winters down south because it's not pouring down rain and, or freezing. And yeah, so usually it's usually four to 16 weeks, depending. And this tour we were actually supposed to be on um, was supposed to be a all the way coast to coast, a full four months of touring. And Kevin just asked how much touring we normally do. And we usually tour about eight months out of the year. Yeah. But then when we're in Seattle, we play almost every every night in Seattle. Yeah. So when we're off the road, it's sometimes we can't wait to get back on the road because we'll get <laughs> nights off. Yeah. We, we <laughs> average about <laughs> yeah, yeah, I get it. I get it. So um your style, as you just described it, is a bit of a mishmash of styles. If you had to extricate one style for you to perform, and thankfully you don't, but if you did, what would it be? I'd say swing. 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 Yeah. And that's pretty much the basis of, 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 of what you've got right now, right? Yeah, like nineteen yeah. twenties, nineteen thirties swing. Like big band era, you know. Yeah, we big actually, band era of swing. We work with a larger group uh, that we call Kate Boss and the Big Boss Band. I know I'm breaking the fourth wall here, but my real name is <laughs> Kate Boss. Um, and we do we do swing dances. We do nineteen twenties parties. We do all kinds of uh, of the old jazz stuff with the fuller band, so that we can have a horn section and we can have dancers. People do dance to the music, but because we don't have a, a bass player or a drummer, it can be a little bit more challenging mm -hmm. for that beat. Is, so. Yeah, and so if you guess will act, it's more of a act. Let's talk about that instrument in your uh, hand and mouth Sunday, and and will we see that at all making an appearance tomorrow night? Okay, yeah. Mr. Gessel's grabbing uh, my melodica right now. It's called the melodica. And it is a wind-powered instrument. So it looks like a keyboard. Oh, there we go, as you can see here. So it's just got the keys like a piano would have. And, you know, with an accordion, 
uh, the way that you make the sound with the keyboard on the accordion is with the bellows. So when you're pushing and pulling the bellows out, that pushes air through. But with melodica, you use your breath. So you just stick it in your mouth and... So it's a harmonica that I could actually play because I was a pianist in a prior lifetime. Yes! <laughs> Oh, yeah. that's great. That's great. Um, let's um, let's talk a little bit about um, what a touring, what your touring show would be like. Because you just talked about it with the band, but on on the road, if you play the grand, when we see you at the grand at X date, it will be the two of you, right? Yes. So mm -hmm. this is it's a very specific act, Sunday and Mr. Gessel, and. What kind of sets it apart between other, you know, vintage jazz or uh, early jazz acts is that we we kind of treat it like uh, what's that old show? What am I thinking of? Um, Carol yeah, like the Carol Burnett show or mm -hmm. the no, it's the other one that we always refer to that I can't remember right now. So we use comedy, we use um, facial expressions, we have like little bits that we do during our songs. So we kind of have a lot of fun with it and try to, our mission is to just bring joy to people. Uh, a lot of times it's through nostalgia. So people will hear us playing, uh, you know, the best is yet to come, they bone to be fun. So they're going to hear some of those old kind of favorite songs uh, from back in the day. A lot of music is actually, you know, we're talking with some of our audience members and they're like, oh, my mom used to listen to that record or I love Ella Fitzgerald. And, you know, we, we talk about some of the composers and the people who used to perform these songs in our act as well. So each song kind of has some stories to it. All of the original music that we perform, we also have, Kind of funny stories about how we got to write those songs and and where they come from and where we were when we wrote them because we're always on the road so it's there's a lot of interesting banter and stories and jokes i tell a lot of jokes and some people think i'm really funny yeah so our, our act kind of is like sketch in you know, almost sketch comedy in a way mm -hmm. each song is a bit so there's some history, um, there's some comedy, there's some antics. We play the song, which ties everything together, and um, and we have you know little shenanigans, little things like that that kind of bring more to the, to a stage show. Mm -hmm. That's great. I mean, it's it's not a concert; it's an entertainment, and uh, and, and that and it sounds like great fun, just the way you describe it. I'm going to take a short break because I have an audience in front of me and I have people, that, you know, they don't want to see you when they come back. And I want to, we, our planet, the Grand, is uh, currently, we're, we're closed, like, you know, everybody else. We're going to try to reopen uh, on September the 12th. Uh, we're planning to open with a socially distanced audience, but uh, we have a great group uh, called B-Twins who are, who are going to join us. And, uh, and I want to give our little audience here a little bit of a taste. So we're going to go away for about 60 seconds. We'll be back. And in the meantime, you can enjoy this little uh, preview of B-Twins. Those are B twins. Hey. They look so, awesome. Yeah, they'll be fun. 
it'll be fun. It's be a great, you know, if we're going to get out, we're going to celebrate. It'll be a terrific way to do it. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So with that said, um, we have, well, oh, wait, I have this. I keep forgetting that I'm my own engineer. So, <laughs> uh, you know, and uh, I can tell people who they've got. Uh, we've got, we've got Sunday, Mr. Gessel. Uh, this is your website, of course, where people can find you, fi find information there. Let's talk for a little bit, if you will. Um, one of the things about uh, about this format is you as artists are kind enough to come and you're not charging me to appear here or to give me content for my show. Um, but gee, wouldn't it be nice if people watch tonight or especially tomorrow and enjoy it and have an opportunity to say, you know, here's some artists who, who are had a big tour that's not happening um, and uh, maybe we can help them. So tell us how uh, the, the opportunities that people have, uh, first of all, maybe remind them uh, of, of what you've lost. We're, we're so, it's so easy to sit in, a, in an area where there's a venue and know that we've lost, you know, 36 performances in eight, six months or seven months or whatever. But there's another side to the equation. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So um, we were booked for a national coast to coast tour starting April 1st through uh, July 20th. Uh, we had 65 shows booked on that tour and um, it got canceled. So um, we have been trying to come up with really creative ways to continue our career this was a uh, this was the whole tour was in support of our new album called fun and fancy and we actually produced a vinyl record for this uh, album release it's our first vinyl record and uh our our uh, album release show was scheduled for march 19th which is the week that seattle basically closed down so we had a huge release show scheduled at the Triple Door, downtown Seattle. That's a beautiful 300 seat um, theater and had hired lots of other musicians and dancers and a huge show to um, to celebrate this uh, new album. So that also got canceled, but we turned to live streaming. So we live streamed our album release and we have done a few live streams since then. Uh, but one of the things that has been really sustaining and helping us is our Patreon platform, where our patrons basically pay a subscription fee every month from as little as $2 a month to as much as they want. We have some people giving us $50 a month. And basically, you gain access to our exclusive content. We do patron-only curated concerts that we perform live here on our RV. We do behind the scenes videos. We have uh, special releases and things that we offer only to our patrons. So that's been really great. And I was, we were talking about the melodica earlier, Joe, and something that we actually sell are Sunday and Mr. Gessel melodicas. So that has been something that people have been purchasing uh, just to kind of like help out with uh, offsetting costs of getting our shows and our tours canceled. The Melodicas come with uh, basically a, down, a USB stick, a flash drive that has all of our albums and um, all of our music videos on there and a Melodica tutorial from Sunday. Uh, and we also have been selling our vinyl record online, our CDs, um, T-shirts, you know, all of our merchandise. Um, and one of our top sellers right now are dedication videos. So people ask us to uh, record uh, a song. One. Uh, we're doing actually, we're working on Father's Day right now. So we're calling them dedication videos. And I'll tell your dad a dad joke and his favorite song and so that's a sliding scale right now because we realize that a lot of people are out of work a lot of people are struggling during this pandemic and we want to make sure that um, everybody gets a chance to have a little joy and a little love a little break from uh what's going on right now um depending you know regardless of income and we are also working on curbside concerts so 
you know, we're going to be doing a live stream with the grand tomorrow, which we're very excited about. Uh, but another thing that we've been doing is because we live in an RV and our home is mobile, we can actually go out um, on short trips right now, might be longer later, uh, and do outdoor concerts for people, like kind of house concert style, but in your front yard or in your backyard or on your driveway. Or your A home. fabulous idea. <laughs> yeah. So that's been going great too. We've been doing two or three a week and it's been really nice to actually have an actual audience, not just our dog listening to us. <laughs> so. Yeah. So, um, and of course those links are all uh, on your website, which I posted, but um, we'll also have them available tomorrow as people are watching and hope that they'll support. I love, um, I love the dedications and the, ded you know, the, all of that specialty work. Is that something? I mean, I know, and 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 I don't say this uh, in a bad way because here I am, the director of a theater who's suddenly engineering and on you know an online show. Uh, are those things you did all along, or is that stuff you're doing to just kind of go with the flow and make sure you're you you you're staying out there during this time? The dedication videos we've been doing for about a year or two. Yeah year-ish. I yeah. think we started them last Valentine's Day because we were uh, we were touring down south in southern Texas and we had a week between shows and so we were on our RV and we're like, you know, it's Valentine's Day. Maybe people want a special Valentine's Day song. Um, and so we just kind of threw it out there as an idea and we were overwhelmed with the amount of people who wanted a special song dedicated to their special someone. Um, and many of the songs we ended up uh, performing, we put on our fun and fancy album. So we have kind of special connections with some of our patrons who really inspired us to start working on some new material and some other songs. Uh, so we're, we're very grateful that people have continued to utilize that um, service that we provide. And we when you have the... Um the ability to connect with people online like that they're supporting you and you're you're, you're giving them a product or, or doing them a favor mm -hmm. does it happen now since you've been doing it for a couple of years that you'll you'll be playing a gig somewhere and out of the blue in the lobby after the show is so and so with whom you've had an online co communication and there they are in the flesh finally seeing your show yes that has happened it it Joe, it is so special to, to, I feel so grateful that this is our job and that we get to do this. We get to tour around the country. We get to connect with people, like you said, in an online format and then also in, in real life. And it's just been so amazing to be on this journey with so many people behind us. Like we were, we've been overwhelmed with the support um, for the arts in general, but, you know, also us personally, of people who just really, you know, want to see us continue doing this. I think people realize that during this time, the entertainment industry and the music industry has been hit the hardest and, you know, everybody's tour canceled and everybody, you know, all of their shows are canceled. And you, you know, as a director of this beautiful venue, like your, your shows are getting canceled and people are out of work. And I think it's been, um, a real, warmed my heart to see how many people have really stepped up um in the in the music community and, and in the community and i feel actually closer to people even though i'm not supposed to even go near people so <laughs> pretty great <laughs> which is interesting because one of the things it, it strikes me that um, and now that we've known each other uh, for as long as we have mm -hmm. it strikes me that you are uh, a pair of artists who um who are very good and very appreciative of the meet and greet. And um, I don't think that's ever going to look quite the same anymore. And, and and how do you feel about that? I kind of mourn that a little bit. Uh, well. <laughs> well, generally at the show, Kate's a people person. So she runs out and talks to everybody. I do like the meet and greet. <laughs> and I, I don't. Mason. <laughs> 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 Um, only when I'm summoned, I go out, but generally <laughs> I stay in the green room. 
<laughs> One of the things I've been debating going on onto this is, you know, if we don't have the opportunity to do the, you know, the handshakes and hugs uh, after a show is, is, is talking about keeping the artists on stage and doing kind of a moderated 10 or 15 minutes like this, you know, yeah. where the audience can ask the questions or get to know, or walk, run to the front and take a selfie with you, you know, in the background or something, uh, uh, find a way to do it. But I, we'll, we'll, we'll find a way to adjust. But um, it, it strikes me as, as, you know, when I, when I talk to people about the social distancing seating, which is the easiest thing people can get their heads around, right? Is that, okay, we got to sit apart from people, but that takes out the, you know, that's only a small part of the equation. You come into uh, the theater, you're going to work with my technicians. And how does that, you know, how does that work? Um, as people come into the theater, there are choke points. There's the bar, there's the this, there's that. Yeah, there are so many things that are going to feel different. And thankfully, uh, you know, the, the, the art on the stage will, will be the same. I'm looking forward to that part of it. Yes. Well, and we we kind of handled uh, merchandise a little bit different. You know, when we do these curbside concerts, you know, we try to make sure that people are not coming too close to us and like people are sitting apart from each other. And we've just made a sign uh, for our Venmo account and our PayPal account. So when people come up to the merch table, they can do it on the phone. Right. And mm -hmm. then have the item, so there's no exchange. Oh, perfect. There's no exchange of like credit cards. So, you know, we don't have to touch each other. <laughs> we're getting near each other. So. <laughs> what a world. What a world. I should point out, by the way, that B Twins and you have uh, the same agent, and you do curbside concerts. They do cul-de-sac concerts. Oh, nice. so your agent missing the, missing the boat here. Okay, she's just send you guys on the road to the city, can canvas the city for a week doing curbsides and cul-de-sacs. Yeah. Uh, and uh, as a person who lives on a cul-de-sac, I just you know I think that's um there's an opportunity there to be had. You know you know you just never know uh, how, how we'll find our way through it. Um, I agree with you. I think that um you know one of the hardest messages to get out there is exactly how much. Uh, uh, the arts and entertainment industry has taken the hit, uh, not just the venues, but and not just the artists, but the, the the people who work at the venues. Uh, you know, there are there are you know, and and uh, and all the people associated with the with with the industry. That's a lot of people to be. And we we will be the last to come back uh, because of the nature of what we do, putting a bunch of people in a room together. Right. So um, it's it's you know I, I find myself. You know, our, our, our organization is nonprofit, so I'm out there, you know, soliciting sponsors and donors all the time. And uh, and for a while during this, it was difficult. It was awkward, you know, to say we, we need your support. And I know you're like making sure kids eat and making sure that, you know, the service industries are open and making, you know. And, and, and but then, it, you know, as, as, as time went on, it was like, you know, when this is over and we're out in our communities again, people will expect the arts and entertainment industry to take a lead as a place to celebrate, you know? And, uh, and so we got to be ready and that takes, that takes constant support. And that's why uh, you guys doing something like this for us is such a big deal too. Certainly. Um, you know, I think that there's, I mean, just added to the, you know, the virus and the pandemic and everything, you know, this week has been a, a pretty intense week with the Black Lives Matter movement and uh, protesting all over the U.S. And I think that something I was chatting about with our neighbors last night is like, you know, we were like, well, like, do we do we pursue these live streams? Do we take a break? Like, what do we do? How do we how do we support our communities in this time? And my neighbors were like, you already are. You're playing music. You are the people who are providing you know, a little bit of solace, a little bit of joy in these, you know, essentially very difficult times for many people. And so that gave me, you know, made me feel good that like, you know, our art and the the practice that we've been at for so many years is, is still relevant and it's still helping, um, you know, even though most of our shows are gone, <laughs> we can still make a difference. And our neighbor actually is a school teacher and she said, oh, fifth grade graduation is on June 18th. Why don't you guys come out and play? They're doing a drive-through graduation for their fifth graders. So I was like, 
you got it. <laughs> like that. That's great. That's perfect. And I have to tell you, you know, when you were talking earlier about dad jokes, um, as the person who has coined the phrase uh, for the, for our show, The Grand at Home, uh, the show must go online. Uh, I do appreciate living the stream, which I see <laughs> on, your, I, 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 on your materials as well. I'm the queen of friends. <laughs> so, um, speaking of the music, for the people who um, who uh, have tuned in and have watched tonight, uh, and, and um, now are starting to feel like they they want to they want you know they want to know more about your music, let's talk a little bit about tomorrow night and um, what what did you do for us? What, what do we what can we look forward to? USA, London. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, we have we kind of put together our our premium set. We figured that we were going to be reaching a lot of people that haven't haven't seen us before. So we put uh, a lot of our uh, our favorite songs and our our most exciting songs together um, from many many different albums. We have six albums out, so there's a lot of material uh, that we're that we're bring in for tomorrow. Um, we've got some jokes. We of course have the melodica and uh, we have a, a dog that wanders around uh, every now and then. So you might, you might see her. Her name is Jackie Ostasis. Jackie Ostasis? Jackie o what? Ostasis. <laughs> Mine is Randy, which is short for Miranda. Oh, nice. so uh, yeah, I, I have a, I have a little affinity for Prospero, you know, the guy who ran his own island, um, and so that's uh, you know, so it seemed natural to uh, to, to to go with that name. Uh -huh. okay. uh, so yeah, we we have uh, dogs with attitude. Does your dog with attitude travel with you? Oh she yeah, does. she yeah. does. So so there'll be a there'll be a moment for these two dogs to meet somewhere down the road. That'll be that'll be special. Oh. Yeah, we actually. Yeah. Got her from a shelter in McAllen, Texas, last winter when we were there. So uh, she's four or five years old. They said she was brought to this uh, no-kill ranch when she was a puppy or whole litter and it's never been adopted. For her first so family. For, for her oh. first family. Rand Randy was adopted by us at about three months old. So, uh, <laughs> so she and she has run the house ever since. <laughs> so, uh, but you know what? The thing about those, you know, Chihuahuas, or in my case, a Chihuini docks and Chihuahua. Um, oh. You laugh every day at those little dogs. They have such an attitude about life. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, listen, we're going to take another short break because I have one other show that I want to promote. I have two whole shows in the fall, plus the uh, plus whatever rentals are happening in, in the theater uh, in the course of things. So um, this one's big, and I, and I want to I want to do a quick preview of uh, our friends, uh, returning favorites, the Four Phantoms, and then we'll be back to chat a little more going to the bottom of the hour. Cool. Great. Hi, we're the Four Phantoms. I'm Brent Barrett. I'm John Cudia. I'm Frank D'Ambrosio. I'm Geron Sheehan. And I'm Kaylee Voorhees. This December, we're returning to the Grand Oshkosh with a very special holiday show. The show is sure to get you in the holiday spirit. Yeah, but don't worry, you're also going to be hearing all of your Phantom favorites, too. Speak softly, love, and hold me warm against your heart. I feel your words, the tender trembling moment star. Near and word, our very own. Sharing a love that only few have ever known. My broken soul won't be alive or whole till I hear you sing once more. No, no, not me. All I care about is doing the guy in who's picking on you. In the wrist that's turning the screw Is I ever here in sunshine or in shadow? Oh, Danny boy, oh, Danny boy, I love you so. 
Those guys are all right. Um, we are here at the Grand at Home. As you can see that in the top corner of your screen. We're here with Sunday and Mr. Gessel at the bottom of the screen. You can see that. They're joining us from Seattle. Uh, oh, Jackie has made his way into the uh, in, into the, into the shot. Uh, Randy, Randy, however, is sleeping somewhere upstairs. We tried to get the dogs to meet our uh, audience. Uh, it, it didn't go well. They just uh, not, they didn't like each other. I don't think they actually saw each other. Uh, there's something about looking into the computer screen that isn't quite working for Randy just yet. I like that part, though. It will be a different scene, though, should they meet uh, in person at some point. I'm quite sure. Certainly. Pretty loud. Pretty, pretty loud. loud. Um, <laughs> Jason, because I'm determined to make you talk, <laughs> who would you say is your um, uh, your greatest musical influence slash idol slash uh, mentor? Um, well, probably, probably Les Paul. So a lot of the stuff that we do in Sunny Mr. Guest was influenced by Les Paul and Mary Ford. So I use a lot of his same techniques of um, looping uh, stuff and using a lot of his same effects. And we even do um, uh, some of our songs I'll hint at or go into some of Les Paul's famous arrangements. Um, so yeah, he's one of my favorites just cause he can play, you know, he can play jazz. He has that whole old school, um, jazz sound down. He can thumb pick like Chet Atkins and then he can, you know, play an amazing country solo. And then he's known for a lot of the early rockabilly and rock and roll stuff too. So he's just, uh, he's probably one of my biggest influences, especially for this show. Um, and then Chet Atkins is another big influence, um, as well, I love that old uh, kind of country country swing uh, finger picking thing. That's kind of a neat juxtaposition of Chet Atkins and Les Paul as, as musical uh, influences. I like it. Yeah, yeah, and, uh, yeah. And what what's his name? The guy from uh, Hee Haw, um, Roy Roy Clark. He's another huge huge influence too. So I, I, yeah, I just kind of have a thing for that like country swing thing. Great Sunday. How about you? Oh, well, Ella Fitzgerald, of course, is just the queen. Uh, she, I mean, her story is so incredibly inspiring. And, you know, we do some outreach programs with, uh, with young kids and schools when we're on tour. And I, I always talk about Ella Fitzgerald and how, you know, when she did the um, amateur night at the Apollo, how she followed her heart and she changed her act and she she killed it. I mean, she she really started a, a, a beautiful career against all odds and um, and sang for a very long time. Grammy nominated, you know, just wonderful spirit, wonderful singer. Um, she does a lot of scat singing, which I don't do a lot of scat, scat singing, but I do a little bit. We actually do a song that you'll hear tomorrow night that's called How High the Moon. And Ella Fitzgerald has a very iconic version where she scats during the song. And then um, Les Paul and Mary Ford actually did a version of How High the Moon as well. So we actually combine both versions to do uh, a pretty exciting version of that. So definitely Ella Fitzgerald, she's the best. More to look forward to it. again, folks. That is tomorrow night here at the Grand at Home at seven thirty Central Time. Here's a great question that uh, that, uh, that that Kathy asks: uh, How can they find your your product? Well, yes, we do have vinyl, Kathy. Thanks for asking. Um, 
and you can buy all of our um, our vinyl record, our CDs, our tote bags, our t-shirts, melodicas, all things you can buy on our website, which is at the bottom of the screen right now, sundaymrgessel.com. That's a, that's a lot to sell. So if you would rather go to vintagejazzduo.com, it'll take you to the same place. Um, we are actually also selling our uh, materials on Bandcamp today, and 100% of our digital sales on Bandcamp will be donating to the NAACP today, and 50% of all of our physical items will also be donating um, today on Bandcamp, so you can check it out there, too. That's sundaymrgessel.bandcamp.com. Uh, so, um, now, do you realize, uh, Jason, there are some, there will be people who either watch this live just now or will watch the replay uh, on the YouTube channel and wonder what the heck you were holding up there? Uh, some kind of, uh, you know, what was that thing? What was that thing? Uh, I, that's cool. I have a great respect for someone that says, do you still do it on vinyl? Mm -hmm. um, I'm a fan of digital music. Obviously, it's, uh, it's, it's a great, uh, it's great. It's clean. But uh, but good vinyl played on a good instrument, uh, a good machine is uh, is still uh, something to hear. Yeah, yeah. We we had a great time with this new record. We called it fun and fancy, and instead of a side A and a side B, we have a fun side and a fancy side. So um, you know, depending on what your mood is, that's what you can listen to. And the CD that we made, we also kind of separated it in that way. Obviously, you're not going to flip the CD, but um, it's it's separated between fun and fancy. And we recorded the record in Wisconsin last July. That's right, in Eau Claire. With oh, great. Yeah. My favorite part of your bio, uh, Jason, was saying that you decided to go out west, so you went from Denmark to Eau Claire. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big move, buddy. It's a big move. Yeah. <laughs> and it was. <laughs> <laughs> so tomorrow we're getting a taste. We're getting your A-list set, as you, you said, something to that effect. Yes. Um, what do you think, is there such a thing as a quintessential tune? Uh, that, 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 do you have a, a, you know, a, I don't want to call it a theme. You can't really have a theme uh, necessarily. But do you have a signature song that, that that's either because it's, something you do a lot or because it's particularly fun for the two of you to do together? Yeah, the first two songs that we're opening up with have been our, like, for the last uh, year, kind of our opening songs. A Wink and a Smile, which was actually written for the Sleepless in Seattle soundtrack. And um, I've never heard anybody do it, um, but it's a really cool song. We, we made our own special Sunny Mr. Gessel version of it, which we put on a record a few years ago, but it just... Which includes a whistle solo from me. <laughs> but it's just such a good um, opener. Um, and then we always go into Bye Bye Blues, um, a tune from 1921. But Les Paul and Mary Ford had a huge hit with it, number one hit back in the early 50s. Um, we have our own little version where we it's more of an up-tempo swing, and we, we kind of rock out a little bit to kind of get get into the show. And then, then from there, it, it's a lot of peaks and valleys, ballads, up-tempo, some uh, Latin pieces and um, yeah, it's a fun show. Yeah. As artists, um, how does a conversation go when you're when you're listening to a tune or discover a tune or even write a tune? Um, but not so much when you write it because you're controlling that from the start. But when you're listening to a, a tune and decide to cover it or, or do it, um, what's the conversation like when you hear it in a certain fashion? And you have to decide whether you're going to do it in its original style or whether you're going to Sunday and Mr. Gessel it up. Yeah. Well, we never do it in the original style. We Sunday and Mr. Gessel it up. So I'll listen to as many versions as possible. I'll switch the chords around. Um, Sunday, we'll listen to a bunch of different people singing it. You know, try to listen to like a half a dozen to a dozen different people that have done these songs and um, put it all together in a blender and come up with our own original Sunday Mr. Gessel sound for it. Um, there's a lot of reharmonization that go into these songs. I don't really stick to the, the chords. Um, I'll find different reharms and find something that's um, 
always going for since we are just a duo there's no drums there's no bass i need to take into consideration what i can pull out the low end of my guitar so sometimes i'll tune my low string way down to give it the essence of the bass um and i'll use a looping pedal to loop certain sections that come in and you never know nobody ever knows i'm looping they're like why are there all some four guitars i have no idea like the song never repeated so <laughs> um so that all goes into the arranging of it because i'll have to sometimes simplify chords um in order to get more out of them um in an arrangement and then i'm um, sometimes going a different direction a little bit um but you know the harmony always still supports the original melody um sometimes when they become dedications we will rewrite the lyrics for the person um and that that's kind of fun too yeah so that pro that process from start to finish what's the timeline on that typically I imagine sometimes it goes quickly and sometimes it takes longer. Yeah. You yeah. know, sometimes the muse stops by and she's like, oh, we're going to do it like this. And it's really quick and it's really easy. We, we get creative immediately and we execute. Um, and sometimes we hem and haw and we have different opinions on how we should do things. And so we have to make some compromises. But um, in general, I mean, especially for these dedication videos, because a lot of times people wait last minute and they're like, can you get this done tomorrow? Uh, we'll do it very quickly. <laughs> let's, let's talk about that just a little bit more uh, because as, as we're winding up here, I think that's one a really cool thing that you're doing. And if someone missed it earlier in our conversation, what's a dedication video and how can they get one done? Well, we have a, there's a link on our website, dedication videos, and it tells you all how, how to do it, what we need, um, we're just going with the sliding scale, so let's pay what you can. Um, you know, generally when it's not COVID times, we generally ask for uh, $250. But now we're saying if you just got 50 bucks, we'll do a dedication video. So they tell us what video to they want, and generally it's a song we don't know. So we'll go transcribe it, make our own arrangement of it. And then we ask them to send us photos. So it's like, you know, it's like we have just did an anniversary one. So they sent us some wedding, it was our 29th anniversary, so some wedding photos, some vacation photos, and we go in and out of us performing it live. So we do a, we perform it on our RV in front of a green screen so we can put up our own backdrop and we kind of fade in and out of their videos and we might switch a couple words around a little bit to make it extra special for them. Um, and it's like, a, it's like a Hallmark video. Wow. That's great. Now, has, has there been, um, has, <laughs> Has there been a uh, song you, you you just said that the, the, a lot of times it's a song you don't know, so you're learning it, you're 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 making it happen. Have you gone through this yet and gone, wow, that's cool, that's a song we should we should work up and and add to the act? Yeah. Oh yeah, that's happened several times. You know, we yeah. actually have a list. If you go on our website, there's a there's a tab that says uh, dedication videos, and it'll give you a step by step exactly what you need to do for us to do it. But there's a link on there that has a list of our songs that we already know that we can perform easily. And then of course they can also request their own songs. But yeah, there have been several songs that were like, wow, we've never done this before. Why not? Mm -hmm. And it's been really great. Yeah. Um, what would you say, uh, you know, when, when is your, um, when are you on the road again? Do you currently, if all goes as planned, when do you get back out again? Well, um, you know, our, our June shows, like as of just two days ago, canceled for the end of June. But um, we do have stuff in Michigan in July at a lavender farm. And they want us to come and do three nights because, the, you know, capacity thing. They're like, let's just right. over a few nights. Um, so we might hit the road end of June through July. Um, some other shows end of July at a kind of a resort hotel on the coast. And they said we're still on for four nights, um, but we're we'll hoping, see. We're hoping to leave at the end of June. And Joe, I know you told me already you have a full de sac, so if you want us to stop by. Excellent. That's exactly what I, I'm thinking. Is I want to know when you're coming to Wisconsin for a couple of different reasons. Who knows? We um, I'm not I'm not uh, adverse to add-on shows. Uh, and uh, depending on how we work things out, you know, you happen to be in the area, you know, do the cul-de-sac or the, the grand, what, you know, what's the diff, right? <laughs> <laughs> so one way or the other, 
One way or the other, I think people are going to be seeing more uh, of you in Oshkosh than just at Beckett's, of course. You know, Chris and I will have a conversation. And if you're at Beckett's, we got to figure out something. If you're at the Grand, we got to figure out something. And um, we got we got to have a nice. Fortunately, he's got a nice place where we can sit outside and have a drink, uh, and, and and have a discussion. So uh, so so we'll do that. Um, yeah. We're getting to the bottom of the hour. I do want to thank you again for 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 taking the time, being with us. I'm putting the website up there one more time. Is there anything else you want to let uh, have people know before they tune in in a less interactive fashion tomorrow to get to know you? Some. Uh-huh. Oh, we're very fun. <laughs> that, so it's a money back guarantee. <laughs> Excellent. I love it. So Sunday, Jason, Mr. Gessel, thanks for being with us. Uh, I am going to, instead of using my usual tagline, I'm going to play that opening because you did such a great job putting it together for it. I appreciate it. So uh, we will see you again tomorrow night. And uh, thanks again for all of you who stuck with us here tonight at the Grand at Home. Be safe, and uh, we'll see you soon. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> well, I love my baby better, better than brand new sweater. Oh, I love my baby, he keeps it warm at night. Yes, I love my baby the most, he makes me break the clothes. I love my baby, he makes me feel all right. When I'm all feeling new, I always know just what to do. I love my baby holding very tight. Cause I love my baby better, better than I swear with her. I love my baby forever and a night. Makes me feel alive.